welcome to EU TV today. Uh, today we are joined by the principal, uh, Professor Sir Timothy O'Shea, who is sadly leaving us after 15 years of service. Is the London Chief Accountant Officer. So I'm responsible for the reliable reporting of the about uh, 924 million pounds that the university got an income last year. I'm responsible for properly accounting for the almost 40,000 students. Um, I don't think it'll change the face. I think there's a risk it will slow the university down a bit. Um, I mean, we have, we have such a strong international position that even after Brexit, uh, the number of EU students has continued to rise, the number of EU staff has continued to rise, and the amount of funding that we've been getting from Brussels, from the European Research Council, has continued to rise. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, Vice Principal Professor Jonathan Zeki and your colleagues announced a £200 million budget for increasing facilities. Yeah. But students wonder, is building facilities what we need? Uh, students wonder if it's more staff, perhaps better counselling service provisions. What's your response to that? Oh, well, certainly the, the, the level of staff has to keep pace uh, with the student numbers. And, as the, and you know, with a large student population, that then means it's possible to pay for a really wide range of staff with very diverse skills, diverse academic skills, uh, diverse professional skills. Um, and so that puts us in a stronger position. So I would say... Well, I think, I think, I mean, I think all the urban environments in Britain are changing in, in different ways. Um, my own sense is that the university's presence um, in the different locations is very beneficial and just adds to the facilities which are then available for everyone. I mean, Edinburgh, the rector, well, has, I mean, there's, in the last 15 years, it has never been the case that the assessor has had to act for the rector. Um, it has always been, we've been incredibly lucky with the quality of our rectors uh, who have attended diligently, and I can't remember a single court meeting uh, where the rector themselves wasn't present. I think that, I think on strategic issues and overall governance, it's, it's absolutely essential to have a wider range of stakeholders. When you get into the more specialised things, you do need people who've got professional expertise. The university has a turnover of almost a billion, it has assets of more than two billion, um, and in absolute staff numbers, 15,000, and full time equivalents, about 10,000. You do need people who have professional experience and can deal with those numbers and can, can work their way through it. I, I don't think there's a simple dichotomy there at all. Um, I, th I think it's important uh, for the universities to be very clear about their autonomy, uh, regardless of what political regime they find themselves in. And if you look at an issue like Scottish independence, which is an issue which divides uh, the staff and students in the university in the same way as it divides uh, the community, and it's very important for the university as the university to remain strictly neutral in human rights. I think the way it's been enacted at the University of Edinburgh um, is, is appropriate. Uh, it's clearly when there is legislation that relates to anything, but to say in this case terrorism, the university clearly has to obey that. If you look at what's happened in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that students at this university are better off than they were 15 years ago? Yes, they're, they're in an um, uh, institution that is more vibrant, um, that is more international. My uh, consequence of being larger is we are able to offer a wider diversity of courses. Uh, we offer a lot of additional things. Um, and Edinburgh is apparently below its benchmark in itself at 83%. Mm -hmm. That seems like a high number, but compared to a lot of other Russell Group universities, it seems to rate quite it, low. It is quite puzzling. I mean, if I was running an airline or a hotel chain, 83% sales or a bank. 83% satisfaction would be amazingly good. So it, one of the things that's important to understand is that if you look at the satisfaction scores of British universities, the spread is very small. Yeah. You know, all, you know, we, we are, I'm a, I have to be honest, I'm a little puzzled uh, that we aren't higher, but you know, this is, you know, 83% 80, is not a catastrophic low number. What about for that 17% that are on the opposite side? Mm -hmm. For them, this might seem catastrophic. One can only imagine why they have a low satisfaction at their time of well, university. What would you say to them? Uh, well, I'm disappointed that they end up anybody. I'm disappointed that a single student would say they were not satisfied. I mean, one has to look at other more objective measures. So, for the university, is it a case of as long as people are sort of employed after university and research continues, 
student satisfaction maybe can take a back step. No, 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 it's, it's, it's important. And the senior vice principal is a very dynamic team of assistant principals who are working on every dimension of it, and we're working hard on the physical estate, hard on finding ways of using information technology to improve the student learning experience. Do you think the University of Edinburgh is in good stead for, let's say, the next 15 years? I think it's in fact good shape. Yeah. We are. Uh, yeah, I think the key thing in an institution as big and successful yeah, um, as Edinburgh is you need to um, trust the student leaders, you need to trust the senior staff. Um, you know, I think you're making the basic assumption you one should be going into things is that you're dealing with highly competent, very strategic people and you should trust their instincts.